Day 979 of the Trump administration, the eve of congressional testimony from the acting director of national intelligence and the inspector general. And we have brand new revelations about the whistleblower whose explosive complaint touched off the impeachment inquiry now underway. The New York Times reports new details about the intel officer who raised concerns about Trump's phone call with the president of Ukraine. The Times reports that the conversation, quote, raised alarms not only about what the two men said in a phone call, but also about how the White House handled records of the conversation, according to two people briefed on the complaint. The whistleblower identified multiple White House officials as witnesses to potential presidential misconduct who could corroborate the complaint, the people said, adding that the inspector general for the intelligence community, Michael Atkinson, interviewed witnesses. Atkinson also found reason to believe that the whistleblower may not support the re-election of Mr. Trump and made clear that the complainant was not in a position to directly listen to the call or to see the memo that reconstructed it before it was made public. Today, the White House released its notes from that call between Trump and the Ukrainian president, Zelensky, uh, that was made on July 25th, exactly two months ago. The document which is not a verbatim transcript, but is based off of notes and recollections of a conversation. The document confirms reports that Trump asked for an investigation of Joe Biden and his son. Trump in the conversation reminds Zelensky, quote, we do a lot for Ukraine. We spend a lot of effort and a lot of time. The United States has been very, very good to Ukraine. The response from Zelensky, we are ready to continue to cooperate for the next steps. Specifically, we are almost ready to buy more javelins. That means anti-tank missiles from the United States for defense purposes. Trump continues, I would like you to do us a favor, though. I would like you to find out what happened with this whole situation with Ukraine. They say crowd strike. I guess you have one of your wealthy people, the server. They say Ukraine has it. He then mentions William Barr. I would like to have the attorney general call you or your people, and I would like you to get to the bottom of it. President Trump then brings up Rudy Giuliani, his personal attorney. Quote, Mr. Giuliani is a highly respected man. I will ask him to call you along with the attorney general. Rudy very much knows what's happening. If you could speak to him, that would be great. There was a lot of talk about Biden's son that Biden stopped the prosecution, and a lot of people want to find out uh, about that. So whatever you can do with the attorney general would be great. Note that there is no evidence that either Vice President Biden or his son, Hunter, were guilty of any wrongdoing in Ukraine. We also learned tonight that the July call was not the first time the two men had spoken. The New York Times also reports this, quote, when Ukraine elected its new leader on April 21st, Mr. Trump seized on the moment as an opportunity to press his case. Within hours of Mr. Zelensky's victory, Mr. Trump placed a congratulatory call as he was en route from his Mar-a-Lago resort in Florida to Washington. He urged Mr. Zelensky to coordinate with Mr. Giuliani and to pursue investigations of corruption, according to people familiar with the call, the details of which have not previously been reported. Late today, Trump spoke out about the impeachment investigation, his phone call in July, and efforts to make the whistleblower's complaint public. But I've spoken with leader Kevin McCarthy and the Republicans, many of them, and we were going to do this anyway, but I've informed them, all of the House members, that I fully support transparency on the so-called whistleblower information. The witch hunt continues, but they're getting hit hard on this witch hunt because when they look at the information, it's a joke. Impeachment for that? I think you should ask for the first conversation. It was beautiful. It was just a perfect conversation. But I think you should do that. I think you should do. And I think you should ask for VP Pence's conversation. You take a look at that call. It was perfect. I didn't do it. There was no quid pro quo. Democrats saying, listen, we can't beat him at the election, so let's impeach him. The complaint is now in the hands of Congress. This afternoon, at about the same time Trump was speaking, members of the House and Senate Intelligence Committees were able to view the document containing the allegations against Trump. I found the allegations deeply disturbing. I also found them very credible. I can understand why the Inspector General found them credible. I think it's a uh, travesty that this complaint was withheld 
as long as it was, because it was an urgent matter. It is an urgent matter. Democrats ought not to be using the word impeach before they had had the whistleblower complaint or read any of the transcripts. Republicans ought not to be rushing to circle the wagons and say there's no there there when there's obviously lots that's very troubling there. Tonight, 220 members of the House, that is a majority, support some type of action regarding impeachment. Last night at this time, that number was 188. On Monday, it was 147. As we mentioned at the top of the show, acting director of national intelligence Joseph McGuire will appear before Congress tomorrow. He will testify at an open hearing on the whistleblower complaint at 9 a.m. That will be before the House Intelligence Committee. And then at 2 p.m., he and the inspector general Michael Atkinson will go before the Senate Intel Committee in a closed session. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.